The topics on the show are highly opinionated and should not be replaced by medical or professional advice. Ready, boy? This is Jeremy's Sex Talk, Season 2, baby. Hey there, everyone. This is Jeremy Spadams, and you're watching Episode 1 of Jeremy's Sex Talk, Season 2. In this episode, I am interviewing Joel someone, and if you haven't met that man, he is a great, funny performer and artist. He joins me as we talk about today's topic, sex during COVID and how it affected things for performers and for gay men for sex. This is all opinionated, but we have some fun. I have Joel Someone <laughs> with me in episode one. Hi everybody, I'm Joel Someone and uh, I'm on your sex talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy that you're here, honestly. We met this year during a, a scene that I did with you after a year and a half hiatus for me. Uh, and you're yes. fairly new to the industry, correct? Um, this is my third year. Okay. With it. So I'm newish. Yeah, it's still new. That's still yeah. new. Let's talk about sex during COVID. Oh, well, you know, sex during COVID has been really, it's been very difficult. I'm a sex worker as well. I've always been extremely careful. One of the reasons I loved making porn was you get tested very regularly for all the scenes you do, and it kind of holds you accountable in your private life, which I, I like. I personally like that. I like being able to say, I was tested on the first, today's the sixth. This is, you know what I mean? This is what, what comfort I come into with it. Even though our industry is very bareback these days, my comfort level is different than other people's comfort level. And I've never really been one to push bear back on people who may, might not want it. So I, I'm one of those people that fundamentally has always been very careful. And so the COVID thing was real hard. It was really, really hard. Um, I was locked down a long time until June when this whole all that happened. And that was right when everybody was starting to see kind of like parties forming up or people traveling regularly. And I was hard locked down until June. But that's when the porn studios in LA started opening up again and really doing heavy testing with it. And it just feels kind of like um, very similar to before now, like now that we have, to, now that all the studios test for COVID as well, it's kind of in like my comfort yeah. toolbox to know that, hey, I did a shoot two days ago. I tested negative for COVID yeah. then. You yeah, know what it's, I mean? so it's, it's funny just, how like the industry adapted to that too, just like everything else, and um, just added one more thing to test for. The industry ensures that the performers are tested and that you're aware of each other's status. Do you listen to Dan Savage? I I, I, I like Dan Savage. I haven't listened to okay. him in a while though. One of the things that he was saying during COVID is to um, suck ass and not face. <laughs> To prevent the spread. One thing for me uh, during COVID, uh, because I wanted to have sexual connections with people, I didn't do anything mm -hmm. until about um, September of when the pan after the pandemic had started. Putting others at risk for me is not okay. So, and uh, I would hope that other people have the same respect for me. Yeah, has it limited your contact with people because of the pandemic or COVID nineteen? Yep. Absolutely, absolutely has. Yes. Um, you know, I, I'm a really social person. I'm. If people look through my social media and stuff like that, they can see I love working with photographers. I love to kind of fight. I like to kind of create stuff with other people. I'm very, very social. And before, when this first started, I was actually living in New York, and um, that was kind of my boyfriend had just moved to Los Angeles from Italy, and we were planning on doing kind of a bi-coastal thing since we can do that with our jobs. And when it all hit, I just realized I didn't want to be in New York, that I was not going to be able to make, like, be able to do New York. Because if I was locked down in New York, I would have gone crazy. <laughs> well, the, New York no, was an epicenter in the beginning. It was, well, first of all, it was the epicenter. And it was bad. And I was there when they pulled up that hospital boat and all of that. And it was very yeah. scary. Yeah. There was... um. I got to see th I got to see things I, I um don't seem real now. Uh -huh. So I was in Times Square for two weeks, just walking through Times Square and seeing five people, like the streets. Oh my god! Everything it was re it was really really surreal. Uh, being able to hear the seven o'clock 
when ever because everyone was doing that where they go out and scream outside their windows and stuff but in new york it had like a different feeling about it because you know even when i saw people doing it in la it was cool and i really liked it and it was really nice but in la it felt like every in new york it felt like every single apartment opened their windows and were just screaming out at seven o'clock for all the first responders and everything like that and just walking on the street and seeing no one but then going on your grinder and seeing mm -hmm. everyone and it was just it was there was something really comforting about knowing there are people around it felt like the wizard of oz where all like the munchkins yeah. are hiding yeah. you know what i mean like knowing there's people everywhere but not mm -hmm. seeing them it was a really really yeah. surreal for thing. me as a uh, because i'm a very social person i really love it face-to-face -face interaction and, and that's how i end up meeting people i I don't. I didn't really use Grinder to meet people during the pandemic. I met a lot of people on there. It forced you to, because you had no other choice but then to talk to the gay people around you through the app. And I mean, you could use other avenues to talk to gay people too, but Grinder was like because we were all horny. <laughs> and I didn't meet up with people. That was the thing. Is like, where's there's something just something that's so nice about knowing da 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 live three blocks away. And so I got really good at using all the app. A applications like I, I loved sending voice messages to people, like video messages <laughs> yeah. to people, and I'd constantly get people saying, "They're like, holy shit, no one's ever sent me a video before." I'm like, "Yes, it has this ability." <laughs> I, I got comfortable with that too. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. That's funny. So I think that uh, the pandemic made us all a little bit more virtual savvy with each other because you can get creative with, without meeting somebody you can send each other videos like you were talking about but like also you can facetime each other and like mutually jack off or or like please each other like that i've not done that it's since true. before the pandemic i wasn't a big fan of it it's it's one of the things that i like now <laughs> besides the work because it did affect the industry at first they didn't know what to do they were giving cameras to models and saying hey you guys do this on your own and film at home and then send it back to us I did one scene. I did uh I did like one jerk off scene for a studio. And it, it's hard. <laughs> was it? It's, it, oh. it, it was really hard for me to do. I, I, I'm so accustomed to having people. <laughs> I really am like I am I, I am not too good at doing like if I'm gonna confess mm. something, it's hardest for me to sit there and be like things in my head, things in my head, things in my head. <laughs> Pasta. I don't have any in the fridge right now. I've been using the rest of it. Tomatoes, damn it! Directions gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I get you. Yeah, I never did uh, one of those videos at all. You never did jerk I've off. I've done them before, but I didn't do it for a studio that he told me here. You take the reins and then send it back to us. No, yeah. I I actually lost my Twitter right around when the pandemic started because I I got booted off twitter which was lovely you were thrown off twitter why yeah. did you show your dick pic it sucked i lost fifty eight thousand followers it was really like a real... that sucks it does and i couldn't i don't know what it was because when these things happen they're like well oh, it's because you used it in your profile photo or you used your banner photo or you didn't have it set to this setting i had it to everything i think it happened in march i did I, it, it i didn't want to be that person sounding off on it you know what I mean? Like something real is happening. Nobody gives a fuck that some porn actor just lost mm -hmm. his Twitter. You know what I mean? It was like it was real hard for me because it, 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 if anyone who knows about losing like like a huge followings and stuff like that, it's a humbling moment. It's a moment that makes you sit down and be like, "Hey, this wasn't real. None of this was real." You know what I mean? There's real shit going on right now. This this yeah. isn't real. Well, when you say dude, it's not real, what do you mean it's not real? That like you were losing all that? you know the amount of effort we put into like putting all our work out there and stuff and it, and it means a lot to us especially since i i do only fans and i edit my own videos and stuff it, it felt like a betrayal it felt like a death it felt like something was taken from me and it was it was but it's it's also it, it's not it's not real human interaction it's people who sit oh you know i see what, what you mean, mean. Like, okay it, that when you said it's not real i see what you mean yeah it, it, and it's fun and it's nice but you can get sucked into it and i can i admit to getting a little sucked into it like you know what i mean me and my boyfriend at the same time we're kind of pushing each other to make each other's content better and try to gain more followers and kind of get peaks and valleys and like you know what i mean he hit 50 and i'd hit 55 or just fun little coupley things yeah. like that 
and it was it was all playful, but yeah. Did his Twitter get shut down too? Does he have one? Fucking asshole, no. <laughs> he didn't? Oh, man. Oh, guys. He didn't lose him. He's about to hit 100K in the back. Oh, that's good for him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so, oh, my God. I love him. He's my favorite person in the entire world. I'm so proud of him. I'm, I'm all pro supportive for people who put their stuff out there. And you put your stuff out there a lot. You're very artistic in what you do. I love your content because you Thank mix you. art and sex and your own jingle. Because you have your own personality and you put all that into play and i love it thank you i i i, I really appreciate it meeting you is so yeah lovely. i know I, I, I mean it i've always thought you were very sexy but you are really very lovely <laughs> person, but you're very charming thank you <laughs> very well you're very charming too i still tell people like thank when you. we first met each other that you like in between the set there were the takes you were like are you okay did i hurt you are you <laughs> Very cuddly too. I've never, I've I'm never had that happen. Cuddly. Usually, the performers, I mean, they when the directors yell "cut," you know, everybody just goes into their own little separate corners. But you were, you were memorable, for sure. Thank you, Thank you for making that experience great. Thank you too. I, I, I have to admit that was a little hard for me because I had never done a POV. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it funny how we did once, once we all did, yeah. once we did it, you were like. The camera's like right here in your forehead, and it left like little indents on your forehead. It, it it did, which didn't matter because I wasn't really in it. Like you know, like it was very interesting because sex. Like I've always loved having sex with a mirror in the room, which everyone always confuses with like staring at yourself. No, I'm staring at ours. Yeah, sex. the whole thing going on. Yeah, I mean, that's why. I like yes, it. and losing that was hard for me. Like when we were doing the POV, I was like. Oh. Well, uh, yeah, because you oh. lose, uh, we're not looking at each other. You, you noticed that I was looking yes. at the camera because that's quote unquote your face and your eyes. Yes, and it was very interesting. Yeah. Honestly, I, I don't like doing POVs because I don't have the connection with the other performer. I, I look forward to you and I working together again because I think I think this was our little like uh, our blip. Like it was a great scene and it was really sexy. You look amazing. Yeah. And, oh we did God. look great. Cute little Cinco de Mayo. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I can't wait for that to come out. It just, that'll be really funny. I definitely want to do some more work with you in your studio in LA, though. That's right. I will. I will set up a. I will set up some lighting, make you glow. Like yeah, you. please, please do. I I love glowing. <laughs> There's other performers that I met over the weekend who are really excited to do it too. They're younger, so they have all that energy. Don't you love yeah, that? oh my gosh, their energy was insane. I was just looking at them and I'm like, I need you to talk on my show. You need to bring all of this with you on that day. How old are you if you don't mind me asking? Can you not say it on live? I can say it on live. No, I'm 32. I'm 34. I'm turning 35 in like a week. Um, it's funny how you and I are kind of considered the next like level. You know what I mean? There's like the twink level and like the very boyish thing. And then you get to like Zaddy. Zaddy yeah, the pre -dad. Yeah, pre daddy, pre -daddy. years, and uh, I think we're we're doing pretty well. <laughs> Just... I, I think that, dude, I I love it because I do all that Mormon boy stuff where they make me like make me up to be like a dad a Christian leader, and I'm like okay. I mean, cool. but also you're you're very comforting, so you're already at the daddy status. I, I I'm working on that. <laughs> I, I will teach you all my daddy. Oh, teach ways. me, daddy. Teach me. <laughs> mm, show me. <laughs> Thank I you so much. You. No, you are amazing. Oh. I, 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 I'm happy we chatted. You look as great as I left you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, I, I, you let me have some dirty pictures of you. So I, I, I have the memory still fresh yeah. up here. But uh, once again, yeah, no, if anyone wants to find me, I'm Joel Someone One on Twitter and Joel Someone Tramp on Instagram. Thank you so, Thank you yeah. so much. Love you. All right. Bye. 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 I hope you enjoyed that. So this is just a taste of what's to come. There are going to be some topics that we're going to cover this season. And don't expect an episode every week. This is a lot of work to do. And I'm doing it on my own mostly. And I love producing these things. I just take some time to do it. So some of the things that we're going to be covering this season is uh, fisting, topping, hand jobs, toys, Finishes, 
What is it saying? Oh, I love this one. Sexual fashion or fashion for sex. This is just a taste of what's to come and there are some twists in this season that I have added and you'll see that in episode two. I'm looking forward to showing you more. Thank you for following. This is Jeremy Sex Talk, season two, baby.